What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, my apologies if I sound a little bit hoarse. Um, I've been battling COVID all week, and uh, yeah, it hasn't been fun. I mean, it's been pretty mild, so nothing crazy. But you know, if if I sound a little hoarse in this video, that's just that's just why. So I was able to get Darth Malgus with Talon down using the same team. I didn't change any of the modding around. Um, I did change the way I played the fight. I did fail against this last week. And I kind of learned that I had to play it a little bit differently. I only changed two things in the fight, but um, for the most part, it pretty much plays out the same. And I'll explain how we're able to actually outspeed the turn meter that Talon provides for the Darth Malgus team. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at my opponent's Darth Malgus. Relic 7, all health mods. He's at 260 speed. Um, he's not running any crit avoidance. His Darth Revan is R5 and his Darth Revan is at 351. Also, no crit avoidance. Castle Sean Fallen is Relic 7 and she is going to be at 287 speed. Also, no crit avoidance outside of her mastery. And then we have Darth Malak with 240 speed. Also, no crit avoidance. And then his talent was R5 with 268 speed. I'll put all the speeds in the description below as well, just so you guys can see how fast everyone is after Omicrons, Leaderships, and Datacrons, etc. My opponent did have a level 9 Malgus Datacron. We can take a look at it real quick. So he does have special damage, armor. He's got a little bit of everything here. But he has the uh, health and recover, health and protection recovery when they have less than 3 buffs. The offense stacking when anyone, anyone gets fear, pain, or shock. That's probably the best one um, for Malgus for level 6. Alright guys, and here's our team. Um, nothing's changed. Modding is exactly the same. 268 speed on Aura. We have Grief sitting at 320. Bosk is at 324. Our Zam is 361. Again, you don't need a 361 Zam. I just did this that way. I'm not limiting myself on which Malgus teams I can and cannot fight. And then, of course, we have Mando sitting at 287 um, with 150% crit chance. And this is the Datacron that I used. Um, this is the same one I used last time. It's, a, in my opinion, this is a pretty budget-friendly Datacron with a little bit of armor pen, uh, physical damage, and the 25% turn meter that we'll give to Grief and Mando. All right, now here's one last look at my opponent's Datacron just to clump it all together the way you guys can see, and then I'll fast forward a little bit so we can see where my Datacron is at. And yeah, we went with the only armor pen and physical damage and the 25% turn meter. All right, so the fight is really, really short, so I'll kind of break down what I did differently, and then I'm also gonna explain the unofficial term in the Smogo community called turn meter overflow and that's kind of what allows us to get ahead of Darth Talon because I know a lot of people say this fight's a lot harder and yes it is because Talon provides turn meter for the whole team but I'll explain how we're able to actually out turn meter their turn meter boost if that makes sense. So first things first we got to get the crit. Now I want you guys to pay attention to Mando's turn meter here because we're actually going to double loop him. We're going to get him to take two turns before anyone on our opponent's team takes a turn. Um, so we got that first crit with Mando, just like the last fight. Um, we're gonna target DR, and we're gonna pass the crit damage up over to Aura Singh, setting up for that kill on DR. Now this is what I did differently. Um, in, the, in the previous fight, I threw the thermals, or I think I used the goggles, it doesn't really matter. Basically, I did an AoE debuff with the Zam because I was like, well, Zam doesn't really do anything here. That's actually not the case. So if you notice, DR still has some protection. Um, if I were to roll thermals or use the goggles and debuff anybody on the team, they recover protection. So I, I realized I really need to get this kill with Darth Revan. That way, once my contract is completed, I'm going to be able to generate more turn meter for my team. So instead, we're going to basic here with Zam. Okay. Didn't do a whole lot of damage, but as you notice, his protection's gone and his health, he's under 100% health and he hasn't hit that 50% threshold, which is perfect because Zam doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. Now, here's the other thing I changed other than Zam using a basic. I do not taunt with boss here, okay? If you guys look at the turn or turn meter right now, like I said, pay attention to Mando. Mando is at 30% right now because he, he crit against DR using a special. My contract is at 60%. So if I were to mass assist here with Bosk, I will complete the contract. And I, you don't want to taunt here because DR actually has more turn meter than my aura. So what we need to do is we need to get another crit with Mando. So instead, we're going to complete the contract right now. We're not going to taunt. All right. So we got another crit with Mando. And um, as you can see, his turn meter is at 60% right now. Just pay attention to Mando's turn meter. Now that our contract is completed, 
our aura sting is going to be hitting a little bit harder and on top of that if we do get a kill we will be able to provide 25 percent more turd meter to our team so previously in the other fight without talon with a marauder here I taunted with Bosk and then I proc the frenzy, you know, kind of like how you would normally play it. But I got the kill with Aura against DR um, prior to the contract. So we didn't get any turn meter out of it. So right here, the contract is completed. We get the kill on DR and now our Mando is immediately taking another turn. So he got 25% turn meter right now, which would put him at 85% turn meter. Then there's no more bonus turn meter being handed out. I know this is a little complicated. I'm probably wording it completely wrong, but that's how we're able to loop him. So now we're right here, um, getting ready to disintegrate Malgus. We get another kill post-contract, so it's another 25% turn meter to my team. So we're still getting turn meter. There's another kill, and then it, basically the fight's over. We, we, we pretty much just um, finished it right there. Um, at this point in time, the fight is pretty much done. Uh, we just have to wait to clean up Talon and Malik, and we'll get full banners. So... But I'll, I'll, I will go back and I'll explain how we're able to outspeed talent because there is a lot kind of going on within a very short time frame. I mean, this fight, it, it really is only like a minute long. Um, but yeah, no, it is, it is possible. It is possible. You just need the right modding um, and a little bit of RNG on the crits. But like I said, if you get a lot of crit chance on Mando, I think you're okay. So here I don't decide not to disintegrate because I want to go for full banners, you know. Being a little bit arrogant and cocky here, but um, I definitely think I have a shot at full banners. So we'll just wait for uh, Grief to give her one to go ahead. And then uh, on Mando's next turn, we disintegrate. And there you go, 65. Okay, so I want to rewind a little bit and talk about turn meter overflow. Okay, now that you guys have seen how the fight works, how are we able to outspeed town? Because anytime you attack the leader, um, if Talon is there, she's giving the team 5% turn meter. So when we do the mass assist with Grief, we're hitting Malgus four times. So there's four separate instances of damage right there. So the whole team just gained 20% turn meter. However, my Mando is gaining more. He's gaining 30% turn meter, okay? So he gets the next turn priority, okay? This is gonna be really hard to explain, so I'm gonna try and do it as uh, carefully as I can. So my, they, they just gained 25, the whole enemy team just gained 20% turn meter, okay? My Mando gained 30%, the rest of my team gained 15, because when Mando crits, he gives himself 30%, and the rest of my team gains 15%. So Mando takes priority because he, got, he, he gained the most amount of turn meter, and his turn meter bar is full. Since he's about to crit again, and he's taking priority, he's giving himself an additional 30% turn meter. However, his turn meter is no longer full. You know, it just... It just reset he's back at 30 percent now but my entire team just gained an additional 15 percent turn meter so remember they gained 20 percent turn meter we just gained two separate instances of 15 which equals 30 which puts us ahead of what talon gave them so yes they did gain 20 percent turn meter but because we we're able to kind of cut them off with my mando taking priority and him allowing my team to gain an additional 15 percent turn meter that's what's called turn meter overflow and then like i said um, having the contract completed on Aura Singh's turn, that way we're allowed to pump out even more turn meter. Um, it, it, that's pretty much how we beat this team, uh, more or less. Well guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Um, I just wanted to show you that, uh, yeah, you can do it with Talon. Um, it's more or less the same fight, like I said, you just gotta change up the not taunting with Bosk and using the basic with Zam to soften up DR for, the, for Aura to get the kill. Um, a little bit of sad news though, um, this counter disappears next week <laughs> i mean um it didn't really hit me right away when i when i made the first video last week but um i'm using a set 2 data crawl to do this and set 2 will not be back next 5v5 set 2 will go away after 3v3 so there there's yeah it, it's gonna suck it is kind of it's kind of a bummer it's like they're i don't say theory crafting is dead because it's like well you know unless you find a counter that doesn't use data crons which is kind of hard to do nowadays um yeah, this counter, this counter is going to be gone literally next week. However, though, there is a bit of a positive note to that. The positive note to that is I do believe that Datacrons are going to be returning. If, you know, we, we're, Datacrons are still fairly new. I know we're three months into this, but, um, you know, whether it takes six months or even a year, I do believe that they're going to recycle old mechanics. I don't think they're going to be the same exact Datacron. It's not like they're going to bring back set one 
but I do think there's gonna be some elements from like older sets that might pop up in newer sets or stuff that's even similar. So if you're someone that, that sees this video and says that this is pointless and that Datacrons are just temporary and it's not a permanent solution, you're partially correct. I'm not gonna argue with you on that. However, I do believe that if we do get datacrons that have similar traits in the future you know we can reflect on videos like this um or other content creators you know where they come up with their own counters because it, it re it's really hard to kind of come up with stuff like when i'm when i'm doing these battles i feel like um bottom of the ninth inning base is loaded two outs it's like you don't have a lot of time to figure out these counters because the datacrons are going to go away um they might come back like i said i have a good feeling they're going to come back but it's uh it's it's kind of it's kind of a weird feeling you know it's not this is not something that's going to be everlasting i guess but hopefully like i said um later down the road that we'll get some similar datacrons we still don't have our bounty hunter datacrons i mean i have no idea what those are going to be like i mean i think cg has to be very careful because there's a lot of things you could do that are borderline broken with bounty hunters but um i might just be biased but thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, I always appreciate your feedback. Um, thank you for all your support. I really would not have tried to fight Talon if you guys didn't uh, have my back on this. Um, this was, uh, like I said, I failed once, and then I, uh, I, I realized how to make some adjustments. But um, I hope you guys found this entertaining. And like I said, if other future data crowns come out that give this team or even a, another bounty hunter team similar power level this at least can give you an idea of what they can and cannot do as always please feel free to like subscribe and share this with your guild and until the next video guys i will see you next time